You're listening to Body Confident Friday, the place to be for tools, strategies, and perspectives to help you feel more comfortable and confident in your body. I'm Judy Craddock, the Body Confidence Coach, author of the little book of Body Confidence, and creator of the Body Confidence Journey, the coaching program for women who want to stop chasing the perfect body and embrace the one that they are in. Welcome to the show. Today I am talking about body confident habits and how they can help you to feel more comfortable in your body. Now, my reason for doing an episode on this is that I'm often asked for some quick tips to help women feel more comfortable in their bodies. And unfortunately, there isn't a shortcut to better body image, but there are certainly some habits that can support you on your journey towards a better relationship with your body. And I would say that body confident habits are vital to ensure that any deeper work you're doing on your body image, such as some coaching or counselling, to make sure that those things are effective in the long term. And these habits or practices uh, need to be worked into your daily life to help support your body image resilience. And because they're practices, not quick fixes, it does mean that you need to practice them. So what I'm going to do is share with you four key habits that I recommend and you've probably heard me talk about these four key habits on another episode of Body Confident Friday. They're certainly not new ones but I thought it would just be useful to round them up in one place so that if you are looking for some habits and practices to support you on your journey to a better relationship with your body that you make sure you focus on the ones that are the most effective. So Have a listen into these four habits and give them a try and notice the difference they make to your body image. So the first body confident habit, number one, and it's number one for a reason, is self-compassion. Now, the ability to be self-compassionate is vital to better body image and to a lot of other things in life, but we're talking about body image here. And really... A simple explanation of self-compassion is it, it's the ability to treat yourself with kindness and understanding when things get rough. So your self-compassionate voice is the one that will say, you know what, it's it's tough feeling this way. And although what I'm feeling is really uncomfortable, I know it won't last forever. And the ability to be self-compassionate means that you can soothe yourself when you're having a bad day, and particularly with your body image, when you're having a bad body image day. And if you haven't heard me talk about self-compassion before, or you don't know what self-compassion is or how you practice it, I'm just going to walk you uh, briefly through the four key components of it. And it's important that I also mention um, a true expert in the field of self-compassion, Kristen Neff, and her last name is spelled N-E-double-F. So you might want to check her out. Um, She's got lots of different self-compassion practices on her website if you want to dig a a bit deeper into it. But I'm going to walk you through four steps that you uh, can take when you are practicing self-compassion. So the first step is to acknowledge how you're feeling. So if you're having a really bad day and you don't like your body very much... You might be thinking to yourself, God, I, you know, I feel really uncomfortable with my body right now. And I think everyone is looking at me and thinking that I'm, that my body is gross. So that's an example. So self-compassion is not about pushing down your feelings. It's about acknowledging them, validating them and allowing yourself to express them. So that's really the first step is to kind of acknowledge how you're feeling. The second step is to validate your feelings. So you might say to yourself, you know, it's really hard to feel all this shame about my body, it it hurts. The third step is common humanity. And common humanity is a realization and an acknowledgement that everyone feels this way at times. And it, it helps you to feel less alone. 
Because it is really easy to think that when you're having a bit of a rough time, you're the only person who feels this way and it, it can lead you to feeling quite isolated and lonely. So common humanity might look like you saying to yourself, I know that I'm not the only one that feels bad about my body sometimes. So it's just really acknowledging that. And then the final part of a self-compassion practice is offering yourself some loving kindness. So you give yourself the love and kindness that you need in that moment. So you might also give yourself um, a hug or put your hand over your heart space while saying something soothing like, may I be kind to myself in this moment. Now, by all means, you can do these four steps with someone else and then that that final fourth step, that loving kindness could be, you know, hugging somebody else. But the great thing about self-compassion is that you can do it for yourself because sometimes when we hit real lows or we're really struggling, we are on our own. And so it's great to have a practice that you can draw on to enable you to be able to soothe yourself. And I think self-compassion is so important to body image work because you do need that ability to self-soothe when things are tough. Because the last thing that you want to do when you're feeling bad in your body is to beat yourself up for, for feeling that way. So that's the first habit and perhaps the most important one is to have a self-compassion practice. The second habit is to create for yourself a body safe environment. And a body safe environment is one where your body confidence to, body confidence can grow. And it's about surrounding yourself with people and content that helps you view, view your body in a kind, balanced and accepting way. So it's about being mindful of the people that you spend your time with because the people that you spend your time with are going to have a massive impact on how you feel about your body. So it's about making sure that you're surrounding yourself with people who are not obsessed with how they look or or what they weigh, or at least minimizing your exposure to these kinds of people. Also, it's about restricting your consumption of any media that leaves you feeling down about your body. So really think about the media that you look at every day. So Are there certain social media accounts or adverts you see that trigger negativity about your body? Or maybe it's an actual, if you're a bit like me, if you still look at physical magazines, perhaps it's looking at certain magazines that are really triggering to you. So if there are any media that you find quite triggering to you and the way that you feel about your body, reduce your exposure to these. So that's the second habit. Habit number three is to do daily mirror work. And in fact, this is one of the key strategies that psychologists who help people with their body image recommend. I recognize that when you feel bad about your looks, it can be really hard to look in the mirror and it can feel almost impossible. And I've certainly had this experience myself. In the past, I would have avoided looking at myself for fear of how that would make me feel. Um, But like many things, it's the fear of doing something that is almost worse than the actual act itself. And I always say to my clients, you know, looking at yourself in a mirror is kind of works across a spectrum. So if you don't ever look at yourself or you look at yourself too much, So both ends of that spectrum, neither one of those things is particularly healthy. So it's about, you know, finding a a balance in between there. And mirror work is amazingly powerful for improving your body image. And if you find looking at yourself in the mirror uncomfortable, the easiest way to start is simply to smile at yourself. So you might want to start by just looking at yourself from, say, the shoulders up. You may not feel like you want to look at yourself in a full length mirror. And even if it feels really strange or awkward, just smile at yourself and and do it once a day to begin with until you get used to looking at your reflection and just smiling. Be really gentle with yourself, especially if you have avoided looking in the mirror for a long time. So this sort of work does take a long time. So use that self-compassion, that habit number one to help you with this. And if you feel strong enough over time in addition to smiling at yourself you could maybe start every day finding one thing that you like about yourself and this may be 
is more about something you like about yourself as a person rather than your appearance. Let's let's take the focus off how you look because ultimately what we want to do is build up our sense of worth beyond how we look. So let's focus on things that you like about yourself as a person and find something and repeat that while you look at yourself in the mirror. So for example, one of the things that I often said to myself when I started doing this was, you know, I'm a kind and generous person. And over time, mirror work will build up your body image and it will start to retrain your brain to think in a more balanced and healthy way about your body. So that's habit number three. And habit number four is to focus on what your body can do. So your body isn't an object to be looked at or admired. It's not just that, its purpose is far greater and more vital than that because without your body you wouldn't be able to achieve very much. Focusing on what your body does for you each day rather than how it looks will help you to appreciate its most valuable purpose. So something you might like to do and this is something that I still do, is at the end of each day, just reflect on what your body has allowed you to do during the day. So for example, have you walked somewhere? Maybe you've done some movement. Perhaps you've been on your feet all day at work. Maybe you've been able to sit with someone and just really listen to them intently. Whatever it is, the function of your body, not how it looks, has enabled you to carry on your day. So that's habit number four, focusing on what your body can do. So that's it. Those are my four body confident habits, which I would recommend you practice. And I would love to hear what habits you have because we all have habits and strategies that things that help us. So I'd love to hear about your yours. So please do leave me a comment below wherever you are listening. That's all I've got for this episode of Body Confident Friday. Thank you so much for listening and I hope to catch you next time.